Hey there, hope you're having a wonderful day. So in the previous video, we went over gravity and jumping. And in this video, we're going to go over friction and sliding. So friction and sliding are similar to gravity and jumping, except it is in the X direction. So just to show you what we have so far, I'm going to run the program. And you can see we have Mega Man jumping. And to move Mega Man left and right in the X direction, we would press the left or right arrow keys. And when we press the left or right arrow keys, we are moving the X position of Mega Man directly. And instead of doing that, what we can do is give Mega Man a velocity in the X direction, which will then move Mega Man horizontally. So here I can add player velocity X, and I'm just going to set this to five. And within our constructor, we can add self dot velocity x and set it to zero and in the previous video i made the mistake here where i wrote self dot height and set it to player height it should be player jump height so make sure you have that part fixed and then let's scroll all the way down and over here instead of directly modifying the x position when we press the left or right arrow keys we're going to replace this with velocity x so in this case if we're moving left it should be negative direction so negative player velocity x and we'll do the same for moving right so here it should be velocity x player velocity x so now when we press the left or right arrow keys, we're going to give the player a velocity X. And then in our move function, similar to how we update the player Y position with velocity Y, we're going to do something similar with the X position. So here I'll do player.x plus equal player.velocityx. Now let's save and run the program. Now if I press the right arrow key, you can see Mega Man slides to the right. And if I press the left arrow key, Mega Man slides to the left, right, left, right. Now, what I want to do is apply friction, but first we need to make sure that Mega Man does not leave the game window. So over here, I'll do if player.x is less than zero, player.x is just going to be zero. Elif player.x plus player.width is greater than game width player.x is equal to game width minus player width. Okay, so we already went over the math for this in a previous video on game boundaries. So if Mega Man is moving to the right and it hits the wall, Mega Man will stop moving. And vice versa, if Mega Man moves left and hits the wall on the left side, then Mega Man will stop moving. So let's save and run the program. All right, so we have Mega Man moving right. And Mega Man stops, move left, and Mega Man stops. All right, so we have Velocity X working. However, we don't have friction. And friction is what slows down velocity when the player is moving left or right, similar to how gravity slows down the player Y velocity when jumping. So just to give a brief overview of how the physics works here, let's say we have a Velocity X and it is 6. So 6 is in the positive direction. So right now we don't have any friction. So in the first frame, Mega Man is just going to move six pixels to the right. And then in the next frame, six pixels to the right, and then six again and again, and so on. Now let's say we have friction and friction should act against velocity X. So if velocity is going to the right positive direction, then friction should go to the left in the negative direction. So this is if we're moving to the right. So let's say the friction is negative two. So now we have Mega Man moving to the right six pixels in the first frame and then friction is applied to the velocity x so now in the next frame Mega Man moves four pixels to the right and then two pixels to the right and then zero and with gravity you would go back down but for friction we should not have Mega Man reverse course and do negative two negative four and so on instead once Mega Man hits zero we should stay at zero and in some cases if the math does not add up correctly to zero and we end up with negative then we should force this velocity x to be zero and we can check because we have a direction attribute in the player class so if we have a positive velocity x we expect the direction to be facing right and if we have a negative velocity x the direction should be to the left so let's add friction and over here I'll add friction with a value of 0 0.4. 
And then let's scroll down to our move function. Over here, we're going to apply friction to velocity x, similar to how we applied gravity to velocity y. So here I'll do if player dot direction is equal to left and player dot velocity x is less than zero, so it's negative, we're going to apply friction. So player dot velocity x plus equal friction. So if we're facing left and the velocity x is negative, meaning we're moving to the left, then we'll have friction be positive and slow down velocity x. Elif player dot direction is equal to right and player dot velocity x is greater than zero. So we're facing right and if we have a positive velocity x, we are moving to the right. I will do player dot velocity x minus equal friction. Else, in this case, we have a mismatch, meaning we are facing left, but we are moving to the right, or we are facing right and moving to the left. In that case, player dot velocity x should just be zero. So once friction reduces the velocity x down to zero, the player will stop moving. All right, let's save and run the program. So we have Mega Man, and I'll press left, and then right. So you can see Mega Man is moving like before, except friction is being applied here. So when I'm holding the right arrow key and then I let go, you can see Mega Man kind of slides a bit. And this is due to friction slowing down Mega Man until Mega Man stops moving. So that's the idea of sliding and friction. And for our game, we want the friction, but you might have some stages or platforms that don't have friction, such as an icy surface. So if you have a winter themed game, maybe you don't want any friction. In that case, the player will slide forever until they bump into something. But uh, yeah, so that's it for this video. In the next video, we're going to go over collision with platforms. So we're not going to have this invisible floor anymore. Instead, we're going to start adding platforms to our game. So yeah, that's it for this video. Hopefully you found this video helpful. And if you did, make sure you give this video a like. If you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments. And if you want to stay up to date for more Python game programming tutorials like this one, make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.